Hello Kindred Longevity Lifestyle Designers, this is Gavin here with Secrets of Longevity.com. I am thoroughly embarrassed. I made one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made on my channel. Uh, more so actually the biggest mistake with my foraging videos. I misidentified a plant. It wasn't too big of a deal considering, uh, and I'll get to that in a sec, but it's very much the same properties as the plant I thought it was. And I've taken that video down. It was the video about lamb's quarter or pigweed. And it is in fact yellow dock. And they were the seeds that I harvested and was talking mostly about. I talked about the leaves a bit. However, almost every property about this plant is the same as to what I was talking about with lamb's quarter. They are different species, different families of plants. So yellow dock is actually in the same order as lamb's quarter and pigweed, but one level down from that is families and lamb's quarter and big wheat are both in the goosefoot family whereas yellow dock is in the buckwheat family so there's a lot of wild edibles in the buckwheat family and obviously these plants are quite related not as related as lamb's quarter and pig wheat are to each other but they're still very close and while i'm not going to make any blanket statements there were enough similarities between them that i one could understand that it was edible you want to not use this as a means of identifying plants. Obviously, I made a mistake and I apologize for that um, because there's actually a lot of poisonous plants that do look like or very familiar or similar to uh, non-poisonous plants that are edible. However, with those plants, when you're researching them, there's always big warnings about them. You know, uh, for example, wild carrot or Queen Anne's lace looks a lot like certain poisonous plants and there's always warnings about that when you're researching a plant. Uh, so, while I accept the mistake of what I did, there wasn't really any risk of harm. And since there was such good information in the video, I'm going to just put it again on this video, but I'm gonna intersect at certain points and add in information or change wording, uh, as you'll see as it moves along. And one big difference between yellow dock and these other plants I was thought I was talking about is there's a much higher iron content. Uh, the root, which I've actually used before as a liver tonic, is very rich in iron. Uh, it's a good blood building herb, and that's gonna be very much the same with the seeds and the leaves as well. So here's the video again. You'll see at various points that I interject and correct myself, and I hope you enjoy it. I am out here at sort of a dead end series of rocks where there's a drainage pipe that empties out into this river here in Guelph and it is a great spot for locating some wild edibles that grow in sort of disturbed ground. Uh, what we're going to be focusing on today is the differences between yellow dock, which you've heard me mentioning, and the two plants in uh, the goosefoot family, which are lamb's quarter and pigweed. Unbeknownst to most people that talk about this, those are separate species. Uh, they have a lot of similarities, both in the nutritional content of their leaves as well as the use and edibility of their seeds. Uh, most people are common in understanding that pigweed is the species amaranthus, which uh, in that word you have amaranth, which is a very uh, well-known grain that is related to quinoa. It's a much smaller grain than quinoa, but it has this very similar protein and fat content, which is much higher than you would typically have in a grain. Well, the same thing's uh, true with lamb's quarter. The only difference is I wouldn't recommend consuming lamb's quarter on as regular of a basis. It's definitely a survival food. Uh, I mean, you could make it a regular stable food, but you'd want to stagger its use, much in the way you want to stagger any type of food's use, but if you really had a good abundance of amaranth available to you, uh, you might want to focus on that a little bit more than the seeds from lamb's quarter. Now it's a bit in the background here, we're going to go and do some close-ups in a moment, but I wanted to give a bit more information about the species first. And all of this is true for yellow dock as well. High protein, great survival food, it does have the higher anti-nutrient content like lamb's quarter does, so you have to prepare it in the same way. And if you had a pigweed available, that would be the preferential, more regular staple food. But of course, we want to cycle everything, especially when it comes to wild foods. Some species that have become very much cultivated and consumed widely within this family are things like beets, uh, obviously more for the root, but they have a very 
edible leaves as well, high in magnesium and other alkaline minerals, which is the same as pigweed and lamb's quarter. And the other big thing with lamb's quarter and pigweed is it's very high in calcium. So you really want to rely on that as a way of, uh, if you happen to be in a survival situation, you can consume that, whether it's raw or cooking it, ideally cooking if you have the ability to make a fire, sort of stir frying it, uh, to get a lot of calcium in, which helps calm the nerves and keeps you uh, healthy and able to focus during a crisis or survival type situation. So that's a very good use of it. Swiss chard is another uh, common cultivated hybridized edible that comes from some type of wild variety within this family, the goosefoot family. And with Swiss chard, again, you have those alkaline minerals, it grows in alkaline soil, and you know also from its flavor that it's high in sodium, that's another alkaline mineral. So really, these plants absorb salts from the, the ground, so it's a good source of sodium. If you're going through a period where you don't have access to mineral sodium, uh, whether it's from wood ashes or uh, sea salt or brine of any kind, that's a good addition and very necessary to help maintain uh, good healthy function through a survival type situation. And as yellow dock is in the buckwheat family, there's many wild edibles that fall into this category as well. This family includes many types of edible sorrels. Um, those are like things like sheep sorrel, very easily digestible, pretty tasty wild greens. Uh, then you also have things like Solomon seal, I believe, is in this family, and also Hu Shu Wu, the Chinese uh, herb that's infamous for its tonic herbal properties with the roots. And if you look at it, yellow dock, it's a liver tonic. It has these tonic properties it's talked about. I probably wouldn't use it as uh, regularly as I would Hu Shu Wu, but you're starting to see the properties of a family class of plants as opposed to just specific plants. I think that's always an interesting thing to look at is sometimes a plant has properties that branch off and are similar in its cousin and other family plants that it's related to. It's so like most wild greens, you're going to be wanting to consume them raw in the springtime mostly, or if you're going to consume them raw, that would be the prime time. But throughout the year, as long as it has green leaves, you can be consuming those. It's just more ideal to cook them if they're not the fresh, uh, new uh, growth leaves that you would find in the spring. Even if it's an older plant, you get the, uh, the growth at the top of the plant, uh, but that happens obviously in the spring. You're going to have that fresh, tender green that can be consumed. And while I won't be doing a recipe today, I'll be collecting some of the seeds from this lamb's quarter behind me, and I'll do another video where I prepare it and attempt to make a recipe out of it, and I'll stick a link to that here if it's done by the time you're watching this video. Obviously, I'll be doing that one after this one, so if you're a regular subscriber and you're seeing this just in your newsfeed, it's going to be a few days before I get around to doing that. The other big thing is you want to soak the seeds for a good 8 to 12 hours to remove any enzyme inhibitors, and also there is a higher oxalic acid content, actually in the greens as well, but in the seeds, so that would be a reason not to consume it for long periods of time, although, of course, when you're cooking a green that has an oxalic acid content, you're breaking some of that down. So that's another good precautionary um, step to use in preparing wild greens to avoid uh, getting that very harsh anti-nutrient from building up in your body. Obviously, a small amount is great. It has some known benefits, but we don't want to be overloading our body with anything like oxalic acid, which can contribute to the formation of uh, kidney stones, liver stones, and various other uh, problems with normal body metabolism. In terms of identifying uh, plants that are within the goosefoot family, generally you're going to see that uh, appearance of the leaf which looks like a goosefoot. In the example with the common lamb's quarter, which I'm going to show, be showing you, it has a much thinner leaf. So you're going to just need to rely on recognizing the plant, do your own research on all those little identifying factors to the species that are in your area because there's a number of different subspecies within both pigweed and lamb's quarter. Uh, but a very distinguishing characteristic is the flowering portion, uh, which eventually turns to seed late summer, uh, early fall, which is when you're going to be able to collect that. You can see it's mostly dried out. I think the plant itself has actually died because the stem is very hard, but it was able to go to seed. And this is the best way to harvest the seeds because they're already dry. You don't need to lay them out to dry them or anything. You can just shake them off into a bag or 
uh, have a bag under it and strip them off by running your fingers along the stems. And yeah, that is essentially wild amaranth. Obviously, this is lamb's quarter. It's not specifically in the amaranth family, but very similar in uh, when you can cook it, it will form like a gruel, much in the same way that amaranth and quinoa will. And as you can see, this is just a a very disturbed spot. It's not exactly wild, but obviously there's a lot of wild things growing here amongst these rocks, and it's just by this river here. We've got a cool covered walking bridge here in Guelph. If you're familiar with Guelph, then you know where I am. There's only one walking bridge in Guelph that's covered like that. And then just in the background here, there's another example. I believe this one's still living. I might harvest some of these leaves. This is the green leaves. They're starting to dry up and you can see how when they're dry and tougher they get that sort of rippled look to them. Actually that thinner leaf is what I should have seen and realized made it not fit into the lambs category. It has very similar uh, seeds, especially when they're dry, that appear in terms of the yellow dot when compared to lambs quarter, but the leaves should have been the telltale sign for me. They were quite dried up on the plant that I was looking at, so yes, it had this uh, emaciated look that just threw me off. And yeah, just overall it's uh, fairly easy to identify once you become familiar with its characteristics. This one, you have the very red stalk. And then the seeds, when they are dry like this, you get that dark brown, uh, dry look to them. And if you see up close, you can see how the seeds have this um, sort of covering around them. You can still see the seed in there, but when you collect them, you'll have to do what's called winnowing, which is uh, removing that husk in some way. And uh, that gets you the edible seed, which you then soak and then prepare accordingly. I was just eating some of the leaves and they have a very astringent quality because they're so high in minerals. It's like kind of like eating like uh, a banana that's underripe, it has that slightly squeaky flavor uh, that makes your mouth almost dry, but that's actually because of the high mineral content. Um, obviously, it's a great addition to other things. I wouldn't necessarily try to make a whole meal of it very unpalatable unless you were using it as the main vegetable in a sauce or something. Uh, then you might be able to get by with the flavor. But anyways, here's the amount of seeds I got from roughly two plants. And I have no idea how much that'll be once it's all winnowed down, because obviously a lot of that bulk is the husk. Uh, but I think that's one meal's worth. We'll see once I try out that recipe. I'm not exactly sure how I'll winnow it. I just see a spider in here I'm going to let out of the bag. But um, yeah, you just want to collect it and experiment with it. you got to do this before a crisis happens. But having this information in the back of your head is a good thing to have, uh, just for the caution that there might be a situation one day where you need to use this information for survival purposes. So as I was collecting that I could see some of them had cobwebs on them and other things attached to the plant so you just want to clean and winnow it for that purpose obviously to get rid of stuff you don't want to eat. <laughs> so let me know in the comments below if you've ever collected uh, amaranth or pigweed seeds before. Or a yellow dock for that matter. Or if you've used them as salad. Um, yeah, just describe your experiences with it. Let me know if you've ever seen it in your area also. Uh, the number one thing is to get familiar with what variety is in your area, what it looks like. There's difference in characteristics in subtle ways, but the broad characteristics are, like I mentioned, there's those leaves. Uh, you, often it's a reddish stalk, although there's definitely some types of pigweed which have the green stalk. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to be doing more wild food foraging videos in time to come, although we're coming up to the fall and I don't know a ton of wild edibles that you can collect in the uh, winter and fall, but uh, maybe we'll try and fit in some mushroom videos. Subscribe if you haven't done that already. Like, favorite, and share the video if you feel so inclined. And with that, I'll talk to you next time. Take care and embrace life without limits. guy thinks I have some sort of food he's been hanging around while I shoot the video. Other than that, there's some ducks around. Oh.
in the distance there. Oh, hello. 